I'm here with my friend Kevin Mowong from Solidarity, and yep. I thought um, he would be great to highlight. He has um, his nonprofit here in the city of Fullerton, which is obviously a city close to my heart. Um, so welcome, Kevin. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, so you're the executive director of Solidarity. Um, how long have you been doing that? How long have you been the executive director? And how has uh, Solidarity, how did that get started? Yeah, so we uh, started back in 2002. I'm one of the co-founders. Um, just a bunch of crazy students trying to figure out how we can love our city really well. Uh, and went from these like naive young college students who had this dream to to live out our faith in a different sort of way, and it ended up turning into a full fledged uh, 501c3 faith based nonprofit that works in two communities uh, here in Fullerton, so more of the undersourced areas of our our city. Uh, I recently became the executive director back in March of 2008, so I'm two years into this whole gig. Uh, for a long time, I was the number two at the organization, and I'm a really good number two. I'm learning what it means to be a number one, and why don't we just go ahead and throw in a you know whole entire <laughs> crisis situation on top of this <laughs> learning curve? So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. So so even talking about the crisis that we're currently experiencing, since you guys began in 2002. Uh, what were some of the challenges and rewards along the way? Oh, man. I think uh, some of the challenges was just getting beyond my own self and my own ego and realizing that these neighborhoods that I'm coming to help and serve actually had a lot of amazing, beautiful qualities, strengths, um, things that just needed to be really amplified and platformed a lot. Um, yeah, cool. The neighborhoods that we can currently work with, uh, these are the people in the city who often go unheard or unseen. Um, we deal with uh, anything from like gang issues, drugs and alcohol, um, educational enrichment, but we also have undocumented citizens who are people who are giving into the economy, the community, they're part of our city, uh, but they also, also get overlooked. And so sometimes you think, you know, like because I'm middle class and I have a degree and I got a network in the city that have all the resources to offer to my neighborhood, um, when in fact it was a much more level playing field where uh, the neighborhood gave back to me. They accepted me and they showed a ton of hospitality. And then I started to discover like the rich, beautiful, deep culture and the things that they can share to the rest of the city. Oh, man, I love it. Um, are you able to highlight some of the areas, uh, the neighborhoods that you um, you guys serve in? Yeah. Uh, one of the main things that just happened before everything got shut down, our last major gathering was this uh, food festival that the moms in the Maple neighborhood put on. It was a taste of maple was what it was called, and it was a way for our neighborhood leaders to be able to share uh, one of their gifts, one of the ways that they are really hospitable to the rest of the city. So uh, we had eight different food booths where they all cooked up their best, most delicious Latin American cuisine, um, something that was very special to them, and they shared it with the rest of the community in the city. And so we invited everybody from city council to local business owners, to other nonprofit owners, uh, local pastors to come and hear and experience what our neighborhood had to give uh, back to the city. So let, let me try to get a picture of this. There's different mamas in the neighborhood cooking in their own kitchen, and then you guys are setting up booths so people can taste their food. And your what was the name of it? What would you guys call it? A Taste of Maple. A oh, taste of man. Maple. Oh, I love that. That's yeah. awesome. So, so it, was, it was great, except me and my wife, we were on keto, the stupid keto diet, so I couldn't even eat anything, which was <laughs> terrible. I just had to smell this delicious food. And tell everybody to go try it. <laughs> <laughs> How did that turn out? Was that pretty good? Uh, it turned out really good. I actually got, the night before, I got really nervous. I totally thought, dude, Kevin, are you just doing what you see so many other leaders do where you kind of utilize your neighbors and manipulate them to make this great big gathering so that it blows up the name Solidarity more? Mm -hmm. and, and then I got, I was like, dang, what, what am I doing, dude? I don't want to become more a part of that vicious cycle that just actually keeps a greater separation between those who have and those who are overlooked. And, um, and afterwards we debriefed with the moms and we asked them, you know, was this, was this something that you guys want to do again in the future? Mm. Did you really enjoy this? Cause 
cooking for 50 to 60 people, that's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> but the moms responded so positively. They really enjoyed it. They loved putting their cooking on a, on a pedestal. They loved people being able to try things for the first time. Um, yeah. So they, I, I think they felt really um, engaged in it, and they loved to be able to share their gift with everybody else. That's awesome, man. So, so we can look forward to that in the future, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's okay, go good. second year. As long as this thing's all cut off and we're not doing this again, yeah, uh, where we're all self isolating, we'll definitely have the taste. All right, on. Again. that sounds awesome. So, right now, I mean, you already mentioned the this crisis that we're all going through. But it's worldwide. Um, yeah, what are the challenges that you guys are facing right now? Right now, I think the number one thing for out there is in concern with a lot of nonprofits is um, where physical gathering was such a massive way that we equip neighborhoods, under, under-resourced individuals, families, and neighborhoods for community transformation. We, we had to gather people together. Yeah. Um, so we bring them to the community center and then we would pick their brains and we would try to resource them and equip them and develop them. And then we'd release them into areas of leadership and eventually like amplify those stories. Uh, but now our first step is completely cut off. We can't gather together anymore. Right. So we've had to become a lot more creative on how do we actually gather people together? How do we build connection within our neighborhood when everybody's isolated in their own homes? Um, and so we're relying on these type of tools, things like Zoom, uh, the internet, uh, making sure that we can get internet accessible to all of our neighbors who may not have access to it, um, walking them through many of the internet providers who are providing free internet right now for um, people who have elementary or high school students. So that, that's huge. Uh, trying to discover how we can equip each home to be able to be able to do this type of stuff. And then in that, I, I think that the next major need, of course, is always financial. So as the market takes a downturn because of everything that's happening, uh, what is it going to mean for nonprofits who are trying to help and reach out to those who are the most vulnerable in the city or find themselves in the most vulnerable situations? Mm-hmm. How do we um, continue to go forward when we are really driven off of people's generosity, uh, foundations who want to give, um, all those areas that have money that might be drying up or we might be getting a little bit tighter? How do we continue to progress forward if finances start to shrivel up a little bit? Yeah, so, so are you guys still operating at full capacity, even right now? We are trying our hardest. We're, we're doing the best that we can. I, I'm able to keep all the staff right now. Uh, they're okay. all getting very creative on how they can connect with our students, with our um, neighborhood leaders, our moms, the adults. Uh, even for our Camino immigration cases, they're doing all their client cases online, uh, unless the actual lawyers have to go in with um, to appear at court or do any sort of defense or anything like that. Wow. And that's, uh, that would seem, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to operate as normal, but yeah, definitely there's some mm-hmm. challenges there and it sounds like you guys are finding creative ways to get around it. I think that's great. Um, where, mm-hmm. how can, how can us as a community support solidarity? Where, where can we find you guys? Oh, man, you can uh, go to SolidarityNPO.org. Um, we have a very, like, at the very top of our website is just, like, if you want to help out with the coronavirus stuff, here's how you can do it. So if you click Sweet. that, quick little banner, it'll take you right to it. We're going to uh, www.SolidarityNPO.org forward slash corona hyphen needs, um, or coronavirus hyphen needs, yeah. <laughs> not just the city or the beer. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, so normally when I have these conversations, I start off with three questions. I'm going to end yours with these same three questions. All right. If you can be an animal, if you can, be, if you can combine two animals, what would you be? Oh, man. Uh, I think I would be a panda because I'm Chinese American and I love, I love pandas. They seem like they have so much fun. Nice. Uh, they just roll around, chomp on bamboo, get on the very, very highest points of these uh, crazy bamboo forests. And then the other thing I really love are those um, the orangutans with the big old like face flanges. You know, they always depict them as like the, the wisest uh, of all the monkey species. I really like those guys for some reason. Uh, that's the one thing. So it would be a combo of that, an orangutan yeah. panda. So a, a pangatang. A pangatang. I okay. like it. Nice. Hashtag that. <laughs> Excellent. Um, what what let's see what makes you smile right now 
in your oh, career? Oh, man, right now, well, number one is my little baby boy. He's, he's like 14 months. Um, me and my wife, you know, as you know, James, we went through a lot to be able to have this kid, so he's been a huge blessing in our lives. Uh, but that probably the second thing is seeing, seeing this world react with generosity right now. You know, at the initial stages of coronavirus, it was all about selfishness. Grab as much toilet paper as I can, as much paper towels, push people out of the way to be able to get that. And now you're seeing humanity shift, which I think, you know, in any great kind of crisis or disruption, it, it's a time where humanity can go one of two ways. And we've seen kind of both of that right now. And I think, you know, as much as we may have issues with uh, current administration or the way that local politics are doing things, they are trying their hardest to be able to um, really reach out to those who are the most vulnerable. And so I'm, I'm hoping that that trend continues, that it, and it actually trickles from like the bottom all the way up, that it starts with grassroots moments. Uh, people like you and I who are sitting around right now trying to figure out how do we help. Yeah. And it, that trickles up to the tops of our nation and into the world uh, to see that there's this real need to really care for those who are in the most vulnerable. Excellent. Love it. All right. Last question, man. What are you thankful for? And it cannot be your family. It can't be a person or a pet. What are you thankful for? <laughs> oh, that's a great one. Uh, I'm thankful for a little bit of time to be able to reach out to friends. I've been having a lot more of these Zoom conversations with people that I don't usually get to do this stuff with one-on-one. It's yeah. been good to hear how people are. This, this pause has been uh, actually, in some weird ways, a, a nice gift. Uh, and I don't want to be flippant about everything that we're dealing with as a nation, a, a world. Yeah. But there has been a time to slow down, to stop producing, stop achieving, stop, um, you know, that, that hamster wheel that we've been spinning in for a long time finally got broken, yeah. as my wife has, has coined it. <laughs> uh, and so this is a time for me to kind of rest and be super present with people. I love it. Yeah, it's uh, the rat race. I mean, that's what it was known for prior to this. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, we're, we're not chasing as hard. Um, you know, obviously, we still want to have purpose and, and be productive. But yeah, yeah. things have definitely slowed down. Um, man, I want to thank you for uh, your time. Uh, I'm definitely going to be uh, highlighting um, and putting your uh, website address down in the comments below. And so um, people will have that so they can get in contact with you guys. But man, you guys are doing such a good work. Uh, known you for hey, a few now, man. Really James. appreciate your friendship, and uh, really mm -hmm. thank you for um, just everything that you're doing, man. It's so it's so awesome to see you from. I don't even know how long we've known each other. What 10, 11 years or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's been a long time. Huh? Yeah, it's been a long time. So um, appreciate your friendship, and uh, man, God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, to you. Sure. When this thing gets over, let's get back to El Farolito. <laughs> El Farolito, man. I love that place. Yes. That's definitely. Yep. Right, Thanks, a Thanks a lot, man. Care, man.